and welcome back to the Green Dragon channel. Today I'm going to continue my series on reading aloud The We Free Men by Terry Pratchett because I love it so much and I don't care who watches these videos. But first, I must put on my witch's hat. I can't believe that I haven't done this before. It seems obvious, but you know, whatever. Ah, much better. Last we left off, our heroine, nine-year-old Tiffany Aching, who wants to be a witch, had found a real witch among a group of traveling teachers in the village, and they are currently discussing Tiffany's recent encounter with a monster called Jenny Green Tea that she found in her river and clobbered with a frying pan. So, here we go. Granny Aching would have done something about monsters in our river, said Tiffany, ignoring that, even if they are out of books. And she'd have done something about what happened to old Mrs. Snapperly, she added to herself. She'd have spoken up, and people would have listened. They always listened when Granny spoke up. Speak up for those who don't have voices, she always said. Good, said Miss Tick. So she should. We just deal with things. You said the river was very shallow when Jenny leapt up, and the world looked blurred and shaky. Was there a sorceress? Tiffany beamed. Yes, there certainly was. Ah, something bad is happening. Tiffany looked worried. Can I stop it? And now I'm slightly impressed, said Miss Tick. You said, can I stop it? And not, can anyone stop it? Or can we stop it? That's good. You accept responsibility. That's a good start. And you keep a cool head. But no, you can't stop it. I will up Jenny Green Teeth. Lucky hit said Miss Tick. There are worse than her on her way, believe me. I believe an incursion of major proportions is going to start here, and clever though you are, my girl, you have as much chance as one of your lambs on a snowy night. You keep clear. I'll try to fetch help. What, from the Baron? Good gracious, no. He'd be no use at all. But he protects us, said Tiffany. That's what my mother says. Does he? said Miss Tick. Who from? I mean, from whom? Well, from, you know, attack, I suppose, from other barons, my father says. Has he got a big army? Well, um, uh, he's got Sergeant Roberts and Kevin and Neville and Trevor, said Tiffany. We all know them. They mostly guard the castle. Any of them got magical powers, said Miss Tick. I saw Neville do card tricks once, said Tiffany. A wow at parties, but probably not much use, even against something like Jenny, said Miss Tick. Are there no other... Are there no witches here at all? Tiffany hesitated. There was old Mrs. Snapperly, she said. Oh, yes. She lived all alone in a strange cottage, all right. Good name, said Miss Tick. Can't say I've heard it before, though. Where is she? She died in the snow last winter, said Tiffany slowly. And now tell me what you're not telling me, said Miss Tick, sharp as a knife. Uh... She was begging, people think, but no one opened their doors to her, and, uh, it was a cold night, and she died. And she was a witch, was she? Everyone said she was a witch, said Tiffany. She really did not want to talk about this. No one in the villages around here wanted to talk about it. No one went near the ruins of the cottage in the woods, either. You don't think so? Um, Tiffany squirmed. You see... The Baron had a son called Roland. He was only twelve, I think, and he went riding in the woods by himself last summer and his dogs came back without him. Mrs. Snapperly lived in those woods, said Miss Tick. Yes. And people think she killed him, said Miss Tick. She sighed. They probably think she cooked him in the oven or something. They never actually said, said Tiffany, but I think it was something like that, yes. And did his horse turn up, said Miss Tick. No, said Tiffany, and that was strange, because it had turned up anywhere along the hills, people would have noticed it. Miss Tick folded her hands, sniffed, and smiled a smile with no humor in it at all. Easily explained, she said. Mrs. Snapperly must have had a really big oven, eh? No, it was really quite small, said Tiffany, only ten inches deep. I bet Mrs. Snapperly had no teeth and, called and talked to herself, right? said Miss Tick. Yes. And she had a cat and a squint, 
said Tiffany, and it all came out in a rush. And so after he vanished, they went to her cottage and they looked in the oven and they dug up her garden and they threw stones at her old cat until it died. And they turned her out of her cottage and piled up all her old books in the middle of the room and set fire to them and burned the place to the ground and everyone said she was an old witch. They burned the books, said Miss Tick in a flat voice. Because they said they had old writing in them, said Tiffany, and pictures of stars. And when you went to look, did they? said Miss Tick. Tiffany suddenly felt cold. How did you know? she asked. She said. I'm good at listening. Well, did they? Tiffany sighed. Yes, I went to the cottage next day, and some of the pages, you know, had kind of floated up in the heat. And I found a part of one, and it had all old lettering and gold and blue edging. And I buried her cat. You buried the cat? Yes, someone had to, said Tiffany hotly. And you measured the oven, said Miss Tick. I know you did, because you just told me what size it was. And you measure soup plates, Miss Tick added to herself. What have I found here? Well, yes, I did. I mean, it was tiny, and she could magic away a boy. And if she could magic away a boy and a whole horse, why didn't she magic away the men who came for her? It didn't make any sense. Miss Tick waved her into silence. And then what happened? Then the Baron said no one was to have anything to do with her said Tiffany. He said any witches found in the country would be tied up and thrown in the pond. Uh, you could be in danger, she added uncertainly. I can untie knots with my teeth and I have a gold swimming certificate from the Quirm College for young ladies, said Miss Tick. All that practice at jumping into the swimming pool with my clothes on was time well spent. She leaned forward. Let me guess what happened to Mrs. Snappily, she said. She lived from the summer until the snow, right? She stole food from barns, and probably women gave her food at the back door if the men went around. I expect the bigger boys threw things at her if they saw her. How do you know all this? said Tiffany. It doesn't take a huge leap of imagination, believe me, said Miss Tick. And she wasn't a witch, was she? I think she was just a sick old lady who was no use to anyone, and smelled a bit and looked odd because she had no teeth, said Tiffany. She just looked like a witch in a story. Anyone with half a mind could see that. Miss Tick sighed. Yes, but sometimes it's so hard to find half a mind when you need one. Pear. He stopped. Can't you teach me what I need to know to be a witch? Said Tiffany. Tell me why you still want to be a witch, bearing in mind what happened to Mrs. Snappily. So that sort of thing doesn't happen again, said Tiffany. She even buried the old witch's cat, thought Miss Tick. What kind of child is this? Good answer. You might make a decent witch one day, she said. But I don't teach people to be witches. I teach people about witches. Witches learn in a special school. I just show them the way if they're any good. All witches have special interests and I like children. Why? Because they're much easier to fit in the oven, said Miss Tick. But Tiffany wasn't frightened, just annoyed. That was a nasty thing to say, she said. Well, witches don't have to be nice, said Miss Tick, pulling a large black bag from under the table. I'm glad to see you pay attention. There really is a school for witches, said Tiffany. In a manner of speaking, yes, said Miss Tick. Where? Very close. It is magical? Very magical. A wonderful place. There's nowhere quite like it. Can I go there by magic? Does that a unicorn turn up to carry me there or something? Why should it? A unicorn is nothing more than a big horse that comes to a point, anyway. Nothing to get so excited about, said Miss Tick. And that will be one egg, please. Exactly where can I find the school? said Tiffany, handing over the egg. Aha. Uh -huh. A root vegetable question, I think, said Miss Tick. Two carrots, please. Tiffany handed them over. Thank you. Ready? To find the school for witches, go to a high place near here. Climb to the top. Open your eyes. Miss Tick hesitated. Yes? And then open your eyes again. But, Tiffany began, got any more eggs? No, but no more education then. But I have a question to ask you. Got any eggs, said Tiffany instantly. Ha! Did you see anything else by the river, Tiffany? Silence suddenly filled the tent. The sound of bad spelling and erratic geography filtered through from outside as Tiffany and Mystic stared into each other's eyes. No lied Tiffany. Are you sure? said Miss Tick. 
Yes. They continued the staring match, but Tiffany could outstare a cat. I see, said Miss Tick, looking away. Very well. In that case, please tell me. When you stopped outside my tent just now, you said, aha, in what I considered to be a smug tone of voice. Were you thinking, this is a strange little black door tent, little black tent with a mysterious little sign on the door, so going inside could be the start of an adventure? Or were you thinking, this could be the tent of some wicked witch like they thought Mrs. Snappily was, who'll put some horrible spell on top of me as, on me as soon as I go in? It's all right, you can stop staring now, your eyes are watering. I thought both those things, said Tiffany, blinking. But you came in anyway. Why? To find out. Good answer. Which is unnaturally nosy, said Miss Tick, standing up. Well, I must go. I hope we shall meet again. I will give you some free advice, though. Would it cost me anything? What? I just said it was free, said Miss Tick. Yes, but my father said that free advice often turns out to be expensive, said Tiffany. Miss Tick sniffed. You could say this advice is priceless, she said. Are you listening? Yes, said Tiffany. Good. Now, if you trust in yourself, yes, and believe in your dreams, yes, and follow your star, Miss Tick went on, yes, you'll still get beaten by people who spent their time working hard and learning things and weren't so lazy. Goodbye. The tent seemed to grow darker. It was time to leave. Tiffany found herself back in the square where the other teachers were taking down their stalls. She didn't look around. She knew enough not to look around. Either the tent would still be there, which would have been a disappointment, or it would have mysteriously disappeared, and that would be worrying. She headed home and wondered if she should have mentioned the little red-haired men. She hadn't for a whole lot of reasons. She wasn't sure now that she'd really seen them. She had a feeling they wouldn't that they wouldn't have wanted her to. And it was nice to have something Miss Tick didn't know. Yes, that was the best part. Miss Tick was a bit too clever, in Tiffany's opinion. On the way home, she climbed to the top of Arkin Hill, which was just outside the village. It wasn't very big, not even as high as the downs above the farm, and certainly nothing as high as the mountains. The hill was more modest. There was a flat place at the top where nothing ever grew, and Tiffany knew there was a story that a hero had once fought a dragon up there and its blood had burned the ground where it fell. There was another story that said there was a heap of treasure under the hill, defended by the dragon, and another story that said a king was buried there in armor of solid gold. There were lots of stories about the hill. It was surprising it hadn't sunk under the weight of them. Tiffany stood on the bare soil and looked at the view. She could see the village and the river, and home farm and the baron's castle, and beyond the fields she knew she could see gray woods and heathlands. She closed her eyes and opened them again and blinked and opened them again. There was no magic door, no hidden building revealed, no strange signs. For a moment, though, the air buzzed and smelled of snow. When she got home, she looked up incursion in the dictionary. It meant invasion. An incursion of major proportions, Miss Tick had said. And now little unseen eyes watched Tiffany from the top of the shelf. That's it for today. That is the end of the chapter. I will hopefully get back to this series very soon, as I love this book dearly, and I hope that you guys learn to love it just as much as I do. But for now, 